Hello, everyone. I'm here with Robbie Finnegan, street name Robbie Bob. We're in a beautiful Pasadena. We're at her place. And this is a dear friend of my mom. They met in college and uh, they were sorority sisters, Kalpa, excuse me, Kappa Alpha Theta, street name Theta. Uh, she worked for Apple back when, as she says, tech wasn't cool. She also worked at Playgirl uh, early on in her career. R Robbie, Robbie's a legend and it, it's funny because friend of my mom is about the most uncool thing you can possibly say about someone. Oh, this person's a friend of my mom. It's like, oh, okay. But we forget that our parents riffed on life just like the youngins do today. And I think we got to appreciate the legacy.com. Robbie, Robbie Bob, how we doing? I love your intro, so I'm doing great. There Thank we go. You. There we go. I, 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 I've set the tone. Let's have some fun. So okay. the, the, the reason this actually... Uh, this started the, the reason I even wanted to interview in the first place because I've known you for years um, But you know, you don't necessarily get into the the depths of your 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 um, your mom's friends Lives in terms of what were they doing when they were your age? What were they doing when they were starting out? Uh, but we got we got lobster we got crab in Boston together one time when you were visiting with Patrick Who's her son and they were looking at schools and I forget why but somehow her website came up uh, and I think it was at dinner and she said, Oh, you got to check it out. So I checked out that's it's Finnegan freelance.com. I'm going to, I'm going to plug it. Let's spell it out. F I N N I G A N freelance.com. And the, the homepage or maybe not the homepage, there's a section called the, the anecdotes and anecdotes are tales from the ad world. Robbie is a witness and there's just these little stories, these little snippets, and they're very, very interesting. So I, I want to start off by getting into those. Uh, the, the first one, which really kind of shocked my system hearing this <laughs> about my, uh, you know, uh, one of my mom's friends was titled Just Nosing Around. So can you can you talk a little about this? Because I think this will kind of set the set the tone for this is like some Mad Men stuff right here. So can you talk? You were at this top casting agency in L.A.? Yeah, it, it's kind of a funny story. Um, and I will tell you how I got there because I think it's interesting for you young folk. Yes. To it. understand like trust just trust that's my thing trust right. what's happening whatever job you have right now whatever relationship you have right now it's meant to happen right. who knows what's going to happen with it so i'm um and i will get to the casting agency but i'm a design major at ucla yep. last minute do a semester abroad in france i go to france i hardly speak french and right. i am so lonely i'm like what am i doing and here? you get really sick over there you've, you've talked about this right yeah, yeah i had an appendicitis when i was hiking in the pyrenees and they took right. my appendix out in a veterinary hospital Damn, yeah i know I love yeah it. it's always a story richard right. but anyway um so i'm sitting there in france and i come across this old american man not old like 12 month you know old magazine right I s and i'm desperate to read english right. and i read this article in there about these two women who are in casting and i'm like oh my god that's what i want to do right. so you know here i am this random place where it's not working out really and <laughs> so come home I'm on the ski slope singing, you know, I'm single and I call out single. I go up in the ski slope of this, you know, on the chair with this guy. Right. And he says, so what do you do? You know, I said, you know, he, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm graduating from UCLA. I'm about to graduate. And he goes, um, oh, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm actually, it's kind of weird. I want to get into casting, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know anybody. And he said, oh, I'm a casting agent. And right. I was like, okay, what the heck? I'm like in another state going skiing and I go up with this guy. So I go work for this casting agent. He gets me a job. Long story short, I go right. work for, I'm working at this casting agency, major casting agency. This is back in the day when, like, Dynasty was a big show on TV. I don't even know what that is. Dynasty? Dynasty. I'm, oh I'm my not, God. I'm not okay, jacked it was in like the pop culture. Oh, they just tried to bring it back, and it's doing horrible right now. That's all they but, do. It's um, a rehash. Yeah, it's a rehash. But anyway, it was like the, you know, Reagan era, the okay. 1980s, and it was all, you know, big shoulder pads and people with big money, and it was, you know, reality. It was like Housewives before there were Housewives. It wasn't reality. Yeah. It was like drama. So we, it was a soap opera for night, and Everybody watched it. It it was like who shot Jr. from Dallas. All that whole okay. era. So anyway, um, she cast that. She cast a bunch of stuff. The woman who owned it. And so at Christmas, you know, it's like Christmas. I'm trying to make rent. I'm trying to pay for my car. Trying to yep. pay for gas and stuff. And I'm like, oh good, maybe I'll get a little bonus or something. Right. And I got cocaine. Right. I was like, what? The, what is now, this? <laughs> they gave it to you. And I'm curious how you even present. Because that's, to me, I mean, maybe I'm just not in the right, well, I'm not, I don't work in advertising, but yeah. that type of stuff, does that even, that doesn't happen today, does it? That seems to I be an 80s. I don't know. She, and that was, 
more casting, not advertising. So Got that it. was right. like a okay. Hollywood, if you will. Right. But it was, now this woman was, I mean, cocaine ended up being the downfall of her. She just lost her whole business. And she was Damn. top, top, top woman in town, like right. top casting agent in town. And um, no, so she gave us all cocaine. And I was like, yeah, really nice. But can I sell this someplace? Because I got to pay for my right, rent. Right, right. Now I got to ask, what did, what, did you, what did you do with the cocaine, Robbie? I gave it to my immediate boss. There we go. Okay, <laughs> that was okay. a pretty good political move, right? Okay, right on, right on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that's that that's the first um, uh, anecdote, not mm-hmm. anecdote, anecdote. Mm-hmm. And also, it's funny because when you when I Google anecdote, mm-hmm. and I originally thought I didn't get the joke, so I thought, oh, uh, Robbie, there's a typo on your website. I should I should <laughs> tell you about it. And then I was like, wait, it's it's ad- exactly yeah. anecdote. And I Google anecdote, and your website's the first thing that no one's ever uttered that uttered that phrase anywhere online yeah so you are the Good. seo is just it, it's hitting your website first Good. and it was awesome yeah uh, th- and uh go may ahead. i just say i've been so busy i haven't updated my website since 2014 which right. is pathetic because i have so much new work to put on there right Blah. right but well, the, it, no it's 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 it was plenty good enough for to pique my interest and get this conversation started Good. so i i still uh, yeah you should you should update it of course but even uh <laughs> even if even if you don't people it's uh i would check it out because it's uh it's cool even just the, the style of it how it's um i couldn't even copy copy and paste to these anecdotes they're kind of imprinted on these images and it look it's mm-hmm. it's it's interesting um i would I, w- I would take a look at them so i want to get into the uh 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 the next one which was um your you say your first job was at was at apple mm-hmm. apple computer can first you talk job, about go yeah. ahead Sorry, uh, first ahead. job uh, as a junior copywriter. So what I do is I'm a copywriter. A copywriter is basically the person who writes the words. Right. Even though I conceptualize with my partner, who's with the great thing about advertising, you work with partners. So I have a person who's the visual person and art director, and I'm the write the person who writes. But we both have to be visual. We both right. have to be conceptual. But the first job as a junior copywriter um, was on the Apple account. And Apple, the only thing people knew about Apple at that point was they'd done the 1984 commercial. Do you remember that one? Which yes. was like the Big Brother? Yes, I do. And there was that one guy was kind of the... Um, he. It was he from Orwell's 1984, and he's right. like the overlord, like controlling everybody. Right, and isn't there one guy who kind of... who Everyone is in a line, just kind of cogs in a machine, and one guy, I think kind of yeah. break breaks the system okay yeah i've seen that yeah so this gal comes up with the sledgehammer and she runs in you know um and sort of throws it at oh it's a woman r- it's a woman it's a wow See, like okay right on then, right? right on totally like muscular totally. woman in like a right. muscle tank and the whole thing it was really cool so the guy who did that um it was real breakthrough for apple saying why 1984 is not going to be like 1984 so they were doing computers right. were going to be able to be personalized now you got to remember computers <laughs> It's hard to imagine. The only, like, people didn't even really know what a computer was, right. but it was, um, it was a mainframe. It was like as big as the room we're sitting in. That was right. a computer. Right. So here comes Apple with these, you know, and it was business focused compu- only, right? Business the focused. Right. So anyway, got a job as a junior, and this is my also little word to all, you know, anybody in now, you guys right. out there. Right. Um, my partner and I, who were juniors, we took the work nobody wanted. Right. So they all wanted this big time, like big business. We'll go business, business. You know, they were talking to businesses, and we're like, well, we'll do. So the at Microsoft, ads. for example, at that point, would that have been something that p- would have been more sexy than Apple? No. So or at Apple, they wanted to do the stuff that was more business oriented, like how to use your com- an Apple computer at work. Right. And we saw this niche Got where it, it was Got like, it. you know, but the reason that computers you know, are were made like are really becoming popular is because people are using them, right? Right. right. So we took the jobs that nobody else wanted and we ended totally. up like like hitting a home run. Because nobody paid attention to us. Nobody was really like looking at what we were doing. So you're kind of a rogue but no, no total rogue. Total rogue agent with it. so you were were you employed directly by Apple so or they no ad agency. So I went right. to work for this company called BBDO West. BBDO was a big agency. I don't Got even it. know what the BBDO was, but it was <laughs> called West because it was in LA and right. it was there t- specifically to service Apple. Okay. So we went to work for BBDO West, my partner and I, and Within that BBDO West, you had people doing like the business really cool, amazing commercials for business, right. um, how you could use an Apple computer for business. But we started doing it like, well, you could use it for schools. You could use it for, you know, the disabled. You could use it right. for your home. Right. And 
we produced all these commercials, got these major directors, got um, Randy Newman to do as worked with Randy Newman to do a song for one. I mean, we were winning awards like the the equivalent of Academy Award or whatever, you right. know, at awards. At award. And we Randy were winning Newman the for uh, that sounds familiar. Who? This is this is probably a d- Randy Newman. Yeah. Um, small people, Toy Story. Okay. Um, he did the scores he, for these. He, yeah, yeah. Got it. So okay. he did. He writes the lyrics and scores. He's a big time. Got it. Um, you know, big time songwriter, singer, performer. What he did. Um, I love L.A. I love L.A. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay. I, you know okay. that song. Yeah. Wait. So was this uh, was this a break from industry standard stuff for a company? You know, a big a big business to hire someone that is normally working in the entertainment. Or you know, really the arts industry was that something that was often done, or was this kind well, of who, a new wh- who are you referring to? Randy Newman. Oh, Randy. No, so he did music for one of our commercials, for instance. Was that? But um, was had he ever done a commercial oh, before? Or was this? No, kind of it was kind of going out. I mean, now you guys, you know, we everybody has so much access to music. It was right. a big deal, and we asked him to rewrite some of the lyrics to fit the picture for right. you know doing that. But. Um, I, you know, all this stuff that's going on with Weinstein and everything now, there you know? Go. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, w- so I'm okay. I'm off track. No, no, no. You're Keep not off on. track. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I love that. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm curious. Did, um, I guess, would you have seen this coming with your, with your experience? Um, would you, did you kind of see this, see this coming? Because everyone's dropping like flies. We got Spacey, Weinstein, all these oh, big yeah. time people. So this was... My question is, was this a surprise at all to you? No, and I don't want to link Randy Newman with that because that's right. not no, the no, story. No, right. no, no, no. Right. I no, just no, want to no. make it clear because he's a right. fabulous guy, I'm sure. But, totally, totally. Uh, Richard, I could go on. That's a whole nother podcast. Right, that's a whole nother. We I don't need, could go but, on and on and right. on and on. And I'm, you know what, like, I'm in, like around 50 now. Right. Still happened to me three years ago. Right. It's still happening. Right. Um, and it happened a lot. I mean, I was just talking to someone last night about it happened at a different ad agency where I worked really, really bad. I was with the president of the agency in his office and right. it was so bad. And his reaction was to send me a dozen white roses the next day, oh, which right. who the heck does that? Right. Because I'm a lowly, I'm an employee at your place and everybody's going to kind of wonder why my desk, like the president is sending me a dozen right. white roses, but it was so, we were so conditioned to look the other way that people are like, oh, so-and-so sending you roses. Oh, he must've, hmm. you know, another mistake, another quote unquote mistake. Right. Yeah. Right. No, bad Damn. news. Yeah. It's all over the place. Damn. Well, it's uh, you know, it's good to see that, uh, no y- more. Yeah. No, I mean, it's pretty. Woo! It's it's, yeah. it's a, the whole uh, the whole house of cards. Uh, well, my whole thing is, if women were ever going to take over the world, there's a lot of openings right now. They right. may just do it. Right. There are exactly. A lot of job openings. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, right on. So, what were some of the taglines um, associated when, when you were working with Apple at that time? Um, that yeah. So they did. So they had done. Um, the compu- when they did why 1984 is not going to be like 1984. Right. And then we came in and said, well, everybody thinks these computers are, you know, for just business or whatever. And we did right. the computer for the rest of the us. Computer for the rest of us. Which is right. That's what you want a tagline to be. It has to totally. talk to you and like tell you not only what it is, but say what problem it's going to solve for you. Like what's it going to do for like, oh, I get it now. And then right. the next one was because it had the big deal then it's kind of funny is it could do publishing like you could do a newsletter you know you it had like art capabilities kind of and so it was the power to be your best like you're just not like in business or you're not just in school or you're just not at home doing your work you're like it's personal doing your work and like it looks like how'd you get those graphics and how'd you get it in columns and how did you get it to look like somebody had it published right so yeah we were doing these taglines that you know, they were kind of hitting it with people. Right, right. I mean, th- this was, uh, when you look back at uh, at this era, Apple, I mean, it seems to me that this is when Apple became, mm-hmm. you know, people still have a love affair with Apple today. I don't think it's, uh, that's been diminished, but this, this seems to me that when around this era, making computing personals, when really this, this kind of aura around apple really started to really started to take off then you know then they had the, the ipod and then of course the iphone yeah. um but, but those are pretty recent richard those totally. are i mean computers were i mean it's funny i have pictures of some of the old computers that i had you know they were boxes i think you know i don't know if i we were, had talked about i used so apple was up in cupertino right yep. and um we're here in la so i was up there every week and um 
I would carry my computer and my computer, you know, you would have a Ziploc like padded. It looked like a cooler, right? Like a right. big cooler, you know, Ziploc padded thing. And I'd lug it on the airplane. Right. And literally I had a man because it's all men on the airplane. Of I mean, course. this is days of briefcases. Like I still carried a briefcase, you know, like right. a big leather with the <laughs> locks on it. Yep. And I got, I remember going on the plane one time and this man kind of condescendingly, but he was trying to be nice, I'm sure. Right. Looked at me and goes, oh, what is that? Your sewing machine? Right. Because I had this big computer I'm carrying right. around. I'm like, no, it's a personal computer. Right. And he had no idea what that was. Right. Was I mean, this, what kind of computer was this? This was an Apple. Oh, it was. 2E. So these are all Apple computers. So got I would it. take, there was no laptop, you know, th this to them was like a portable computer, I guess, but right. it was heavy. It was big. It was probably two feet by one feet. Right. Th solid block. It looked right. like a, I was carrying around a sewing machine in a big bag. Right. But I have to say the ads, the whole style of Apple, there was only one building then in Cupertino. Okay. Imagine that one building and right. it had the try, you know, the multicolored Apple on yep. it. Yep. With the bite out of it, the Apple, Apple logo. And that's when we started using like the photography that they still use now. Like when, you know, when there's new product and they just have that really simplistic, like plain photo, you know, right photography on. or cinematography, right. just like the product speaks for itself. Cause they were so into design right. and our ads were really clean. We had this one photographer we used that just did straight product shot and shadow. You know, a lot of times you try and get lifetime lifestyle into stuff, right. like how people are using them and right. whatever. And we did that with the commercials. But with the print ads, it was all image of the product, which is really bare. I mean, it's naked, just hanging out there. Right. And that's why the headlines and the copy had to be, like, so smart. You had right. to really think, like, that headline had to intrigue people and get them going. And even the mice type, which is where you put, like, copyright and trademark and yep. legal stuff – we would hide jokes in there. We would hide little copy in there. Right. Because we wanted people to read everything. Right. The details. The details. Wow. That's, that's, I mean, it's really interesting because they, I mean, like you said, they still, they have that same aesthetic today. It's mm -hmm. very focused, very focused on the product. That, now, working with them versus your experience with other companies, Apple seems to, you know, they, they pride themselves, and I think a lot of this has to do with the, uh, you know, Steve Jobs tried to instill this in the company, but being a, a hum yes, a technology company, but also a humanities company, mm -hmm. um, kind of fusing the two. So working with them, did you find that it was easier because they it was in their DNA that it was easier to, as a creative type and your creative team working with, working with them, was it easier to were you guys speak in the same language because that was in their DNA? Yeah, I I got to tell you, Richard, I I mean. Somebody was looking out over us because we were so blessed to have that job. Right. This is a tech company who literally when I got the job, I they had to show me how to use a mouse. I didn't even right. know anything. I right. couldn't understand how to use it. I didn't get it. And so I, I'm thinking, how am I going to write for this? And you know what? I wrote for it because it was all about human to human. Like right. what this thing could do for you as a human being. And I, they didn't want to explain the technology. I mean, I get right. a little frustrated now because we're supposed to know so much about tech. Totally. Like back then... You just used it intuitively. You right. didn't have to know all the stuff and upgrades and this and that that's happening now. Right. And we didn't have all that. And so they were, and uh, I think they just spent so much money too, which what a playland for us, right. right? Right. They just like, we need ads. We need commercials. We need right. radio spots. I mean, radio, they were huge in radio. And they radio's theater of the mind. You know, radio is, you do a radio spot and you want people to, picture it and laugh like they get away for 30 or 60 seconds they're right. like just had a little theater a little something happened that right. all is in their mind and they were totally into that we got to do comedy we got to do human stories that like i want you to cry at the end of the 60 seconds right. you know but they had their pulse that had to have been steve jobs right, right. They had his pulse on people need this it will improve their lives and i want them to love it right so you speaking of speaking of jobs, you were so you were working with Apple at the time when John Scully was CEO and and Steve Jobs was chairman chairman of the board at this time. So I think there was a two there was a two year overlap when both of them were at the company. So that would have been um, eighty three to eighty five. Is that the time range that you were working with Apple? No, I was a little later. So oh, Scully later. came okay. in late. Scully came in a little bit later. So um, and. 
uh, let's see. So that was about a year after I was there. And now I look back on it. I'm like, wow, that was a really big brouhaha, right? Happening right. at Apple. But I didn't, uh, I didn't pay that much attention to it. I just like, oh, this guy's there now. And right. I actually, you know, we knew him because he was Pepsi. Right. And I think I had met him in New York before when I had been doing something. I can't remember now. But um, all of a sudden, oh, the guy I met, because they were doing, do you met Michael J. Fox? You know Michael J. Actor? Fox, yeah. So Michael J. Fox did this, um, these Pepsi commercials. Michael J. Fox did one. Uh, Michael Jackson did one when he caught on fire. Okay. For these Pepsi. So they were doing this series of ads with Pepsi using these celebrities, and they were really fun storytelling ads. And Michael J. Fox did one in New York where he's like, running over cabs and trying to get to his Pepsi or something and had a, d- I don't know what it was. But right. anyway, I met him. I, I was in an editing bay when they were editing those and I met John Scully then. And then later he came over to Apple. So when we did, we shot a bunch of commercials here in LA and then all the finishing and editing was done in New York. Okay. So we got to go and let me tell you, I don't even know if that exists anymore to go on business trips on a business account right. is the one of the world's greatest joys because right. you don't care how many cabs you get in you don't care where you eat dinner you like right. everything's paid for you have an right. expense account so we're in new york for two to maybe three weeks because we had so many commercials and we're just <laughs> living the life i mean it right. was so great living the life and so all the editing and sound and all that stuff is done so scully would come by well before that we had to get it all approved so we went to make sure they liked the edits and right. that's when I remember being in one big meeting where it was both Scully and Steve Jobs. Yes. And it's funny, Richard. I've always had this thing where I don't really care that people are big hitters. Right. Like I, I respect, you know, that where they are. Right. But I guess my dad always taught me if you have a problem or something, you always go to the top. Like that's not beyond you. Right. So if you have a problem at a bank in the, you know, the tellers don't work and the management doesn't right. work. You go to the CEO of Bank of America. Yeah, right. Oh, right. I've done it, man. Nice. I've nice. done it. Right. And I mean, so it's kind of, and now, of course, with the internet, you can find people. But right. then my dad, and so I, you know. So you weren't intimidated. No, but right. everybody was. Right. And it was so weird. I remember sitting at that table kind of looking around like, why are you all acting like this? Because they were all afraid to say what they thought. Right. You know, and it must be weird for people who are CEOs or heads. Like, they must wonder, maybe they like it that people don't, you know, that right. people well, don't challenge I them. But I was like, wouldn't you want to have somebody say exactly. what they really think? Exactly. And I think, I mean, especially, you know, uh, you know, uh, Jobs, I think he, I mean, he was obviously an opinionated person, but he's not trying to, uh, he it seemed to me that he, someone you would want, you be straight up with him, you yeah. know. Um, so that's uh, so you, you would find yourself in these meetings and would you be would you be talking in these meetings? Would no. you be? I no, knew okay. I knew better. I was <laughs> I, knew I was junior yeah, and I was junior, getting right. away with murder making right. the commercials I was doing because right. it was I mean, it's like that's what I say. Like, take the work nobody else wants to do and make it something, make it right. into something. And we took the stuff nobody wanted and we turned it into something. And after a while. After we did this whole flurry, I think I did like seven commercials or something in a row. Right. And all of a sudden, the guys who were doing the quote unquote cool stuff yeah. were like, hey, uh, uh, we want that next assignment. Exactly. Right. And you were already there. So you had already got already claimed our spot. Right. Right. We That's already claimed our space. But no. So I only met. I mean, John Scully was like, you know, I, I saw him. I knew him. I saw him in the right. halls. He came to editing. Steve Jobs. I think that was one of two times I ever saw him. Okay, I just right worked on. with the other people, the marketing people and stuff. Right. Right on. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, uh, like you said, I think look, looking back on it, I think this was when jobs was on his, you know, kind of on his ascension Then he left Apple and he came back. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, looking back on that, I think, uh, that's uh, like you said, you, f you felt truly blessed and that, that sounds like yeah. a, an amazing experience. And I will, I will say too, Richard, it's interesting yep. to think of like, okay, that's a major launch of a product, right? That's right. a product nobody understands yet. Right. And so they're, so they're you're crafting the initial narrative around this new genre. Yeah. And they're right. deciding how are we going to do this? Well, there's advertising, there's TV advertising, right. there's print advertising and there's radio. So now I think, okay, let's say what's a new thing that people are introducing, right? So let's say you want um, Instagram or Snapchat, right? Sure, sure. Look how they're going about it. It's really interesting to me, like how they're launching it. Right. But I don't think they're launching it 
right, quite frankly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, what would you? What, what do you? I mean, so well, Instagram's pretty. Instagram's pretty popular, but Snapchat yeah. seems to be having some. Uh, hard time. S- some yeah, some hard time. Um, do you have any? I'm curious. Do you have any specific? Uh, if we have a uh, Evan Spiegel or Mark Zuckerberg uh, listening to this, do you have any? Yeah. Do you have any feedback for? Uh, I'm curious what your take on what they could be. Well, I don't. I, frankly, I don't understand right. their business well enough, and that's the problem. Right. Right. Okay. It's out there, and I don't. E- I couldn't really describe what the benefit is of having it, or right. or why I should use it, or spend my time on it. I, if I paid more attention, maybe I'd understand it. Let's say I understand it, then I'd say I know for sure you're missing huge markets. Right. Because and this is kind of my thing because I'm in the age group and I understand it, There are there's a huge age group, 45 and up. Right. I mean, in fact, larger po- population than the millennials. Right. And um, The boomers, the baby boomers. The boomers, there and just go. under the boomers, like just even five to eight years younger, so okay. a little like 45 and up. Okay. And these are people, it's kind of interesting demographic to think of because these are people who, like you were in- introducing me, it's like, okay, I might be around 50, right. but I still have the same interests as when I was in my 20s. Hard for you guys to understand. Right. Love music. Right. Love entertainment. Like fashion. Right. Love restaurants. Love going out. Love socializing. Right. Love current events. Love, you know, uh, consuming, you know, stuff that's out there. Right. Guess what? I got the money now and I've got the time. Right. So you think you would almost... So why are we being ignored? Exactly. Right. Interesting. Um, We are that demographic, like 50 and up is the third third largest economy in the world right that's amazing to think of and that's being ignored right so uh, yeah because facebook and i don't even think uh, i don't think uh well facebook owns instagram so i'm just kind of grouping them together but they Mm -hmm. don't do as far as i know they don't do any or snapchat maybe snapchat's done a little bit of 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 advertising in terms of uh you know commercials or something but i haven't but that's like awareness stuff for you guys, because you, you, you guys, like right. you're representing. No, 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 <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah. But, but yours is so word of mouth and viral, right? But there's a big population out there who doesn't like unless my kids, my boys, you know, right. in their twenties, tell me what's how to work something or whatever. I right. got to go out and find out about it. Right. Well, that's not how advertising works. You, we're right. coming. They should be coming to us. Right. Right. So I know. I know very little uh, about the a- advertising space in general, but something I have, I have learned about it is that one of the reasons, and correct me if I'm wrong, one of the reasons that there's so much emphasis on the younger market is because if you capture these, capture these young minds when they're when they're still, you know, when they're still um, molding, and you get them into a certain type of product, if you've got them locked in in their early twenties, exactly, they'll grow up to still be loyal to that brand so by the time they grow up you don't necessarily they're kind of already they're already they've already cooked and you don't you need to now target the next generation to ensure that you capture them when they're when they're growing up is that yeah is do you is that how you view advertising at all in terms of um yeah that and that's a that's a huge part of it and in fact um i do because when i was a young mom i specialized in doing advertising to young moms i did a ton of stuff for like disney and a bunch of other companies you know who targeted young moms because you want them with their first babies to start using whatever it is and then the next kid they use the same thing and then the next you know and then they grow and then you keep targeting them so that and then that child grows up knowing oh i always saw you know cascade by the dishwasher well that's the brand i'm gonna like i'm sure richard you probably feel like oh that's what my mom uses you know grab it off the shelf so um that's part of it but i think you i mean what i love about advertising is you got to keep it fresh you right. do have to, and that's what makes it open to everybody. Like, if somebody gets lazy about their advertising, you can come in and, and you know, change their mind about a brand. Right. Like maybe you can offer something. Right. I used to have this, uh, I, I studied computer science in school, and I, I, I like to think of myself as uh, someone that, w- you know, at that time, oh, marketing, advertising, it's all, it's all, you know, just a waste of time. It's all a scam. It's all, it, all that, the only thing that actually matters is, is the product, right? If you make a good product, mm-hmm. that's all that matters. But I'm increasingly realizing that the w- without marketing and framing a kind of framing a story like you like you said uh, earlier, framing kind of a, a narrative around the product, you don't you're not going to reach people. People aren't going to you could have the best computer in the world, but if people don't understand, okay, what is this going to do for me as a human being? It doesn't it, it won't resonate with them. Yeah. 
and that's that's the base ca- best case scenario when you right. have a product that actually offers something. But the reality is, what if you had paper towels? Right. I mean, what the heck, right? Right. right. So how do you differentiate that? How do you? So there's this whole thing called positioning, which I think everybody's so up on how to brand now. Positioning is right. basically finding your position in the marketplace that's a little bit different than everybody else's. Okay. And so there's this old story that um, this is like the old story. There some some guy was um, somebody had a piano account. They had to sell this piano, and they're looking. These two guys, art director, copyright. They're looking at this piano, and it's like, how are we going to sell this piano? There's nothing different about this piano. It right. has the keys. It has a lid. It has right. a band, like, what is it? And they're hanging around. They can't think of anything. And then this guy comes to repair the piano. And he's there's he's like, sorry, I got to repair the, you know, such and such. And they're like, well, what are you doing? He goes, well, this one piano has this thing called a Capita Astro Bar. Okay. And they're like, well, what's that for? And he goes, well, it stops the reverberation. They're like, okay, thank you. So... They ended up doing, you know, a big ad campaign about the Capo to Astro Bar. It's some, I'm probably saying it's wrong, some right, Italian right. thing. Okay, okay. And, um, and it was that point of difference, and that became the number one, like, huge. And that was back in the day when, back in the day, everybody had a piano in their home. I mean, it, it was like right. the, you know, one differentiating thing. So you do have to find that Capo to Astro Bar, usually, that one thing that matters to people that's going to make it better. But there are times, like a paper towel or something, right. that, and so then you go a little deeper and say, okay, well, what else can we add to this paper towel? Is it, you know, you just start playing with it. You're just like, you know what? The people who make the biggest messes are um, babies. So now we're going to sell it in the next to the diapers so people right. see it. I mean, you know, you just come up with something. Right. So you have a story. It's like the paper towels sold that are sold next to the diapers. Well, right. now I just made something that makes my paper towel different, right? Right. So whatever. Right. Right on. Um, what uh, the, you know, y- so Steve Jobs, obviously, uh, uh, obviously a huge figure. You've also worked with John Landis. Now, I didn't know who I didn't know who the, who this was. <laughs> uh, I had to do had to do a little research. So he directed Animal House, Blues Brothers. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with that. Can you talk about what you did with him? Yeah, John Landis. Big. He does big films with lots of big action. John right. Landis. Um, back was back in the day. Uh, really well thought of, um, popular, and you know what happens to guys? They're popular in Hollywood. It's like they were the only ones, right? Like they're the guy. Right. So he was. Well, the they get they get in charge for a sexual assault. Excuse me. In, in yeah, trouble some for of those too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that's gonna hit every industry. Yeah. Believe me, we're gonna see it everywhere. Damn, it's all yeah. coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's happening. I haven't even done anything, and I'm afraid that something's gonna come out <laughs> about me. And I'm. I, it's just. I'm. Just, no one is. No. No one is safe. That's good though. You need. You need. People but that's uh, what we're thinking now. Right. It's like how many people are there so scared. What was Charlie Rose thinking two weeks ago? Damn, right. Right? Like right. all this. So anyway, I digress. Wait, so wait. Charlie Rose did something two weeks ago? No. So, it, you know, I know all he got this in is trouble. hitting the fan. Right. But he, so this last week, uh-huh. he, you know, it all came out. Right. Two weeks ago. Do you, what was he thinking? Was he like, oh my God, oh, it's coming, it's saying. coming, it's I coming. It's saying. about to, the tidal wave right. is it coming up totally, behind him. Totally, like, There must be so many men out there. Right. Well, he's just getting his legal waiting, team together. Just waiting. I know. Just waiting. Like, totally. are they going to find out or not? Right. Are they gonna, and now they should all know it's going to be found out. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, boys. Right. And, uh, Sorry, boys. It's over. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and I don't want to connect this. We, we, we get on no. that tit. It's not John Landis. No, not We're not all. connecting this no. right. No, no, but, no. Uh, but he was right. kind of like, you know, a, a kid playing in his movies. He'd have sure. big scenes, big explosions, big, you know, and he was famous for going over. Well, I shouldn't say he was famous for going over budget. He had big right. budget films. I'm, totally. I'm putting words. I don't know. Right. So anyway, I got, now I'm working at a different agency and I get Universal Studios, the right. stu- like the 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 theme park which you know my partner and I were kind of rolling our eyes like oh it seems kind of tacky but what right. are we going to do right. so they come to us and they say we're doing this new thing because we have this western show and nobody likes westerns anymore so right. we're going to make it really edgy which roll my eyes you know right. really edgy and we're going to call it the riot act and we're going to have like police coming down on like bad guys it was sort of like um Grand Theft Auto before Grand Theft Auto, right. like that was their concept. Right. So, wait, is the Riot Act was that just w- specific to this to this Universal sh- Studios? Okay. So they came to us and they said, "Look, we're taking our Western themed, you know, action show that people when they come to you, you know, tourists come to Universal Studios, right. And they see these. Well, they don't care about the Western, so now we're going to give them like gritty L.A. We're going to put on a show called the Riot Act. Right. So we need a commercial for it. So. 
we, you know, say, oh, my God, now we got to advertise this thing called the Riot Act. And we go see them do a rehearsal for the Riot Act show, thinking, okay, how are we going to make a commercial, like, advertise this thing? And there's all this, like, police and whatever. And I'm like, this is like Animal House, like when all the police cars and right. Blues Brothers. And so we go, maybe we can get John Landis. So he's on contract, or he's working with Universal, and he's kind of happy to do it. Oh, so we it. say, okay. hey, let's write this commercial, and John Landis is going to direct it. So interesting. So he wasn't affiliated with the Riot Act directly. He was just oh, going to work no. on this commercial. Yeah. Yeah, Got he's it. just okay. a guy who worked for Universal, cool, cool. and he's like, "Yeah, I'll do it," because I'm sure they paid him like, you know, like a few million dollars to work for a couple, uh, you know, a week or something. Right. And so we write this thing for the Riot Act, and because John Landis gets involved, you know, we have like one police car coming and like crashing into it, like a fire right. hydrant, and or he something. makes it a hundred. Oh, he's cars. like, oh, right. it was like thirty or forty police cars. Right. We had helicopters. We had. You know, nighttime shooting. I mean, the budget goes up. I mean, we pro- our budget was probably like a hundred to two hundred. I think it was a hundred to two hundred thousand. Yep. It started. It was edging over two million, right. and we're still getting it approved. Like, okay, now we're presenting, and now he wants to add helicopters. Now we want to shoot at night. Now we right. want to do. You know, it's all like overtime and this and that. Right. So we shoot this commercial, and it's insane. It's like all these police cars and they're choreographed and special, you know, the guy doing the special effect, or not special effect, but like the stunts and stuff. Yep. And we're there all night and it's like, it's like a little boy got to like go crazy. Right. So we shoot this commercial, all this money, go into editing, we do the voiceover, you know, the right, and Peter the Gall- right act. the right act, and right. the guy, um, Peter Gallagher, I don't know if you know him, he's an actor and um, he was in um, Damn, I'm bad. Gossip Girl. He was one of the dads. I think his okay. dad or something. Gossip okay. Girl. But he was back in the day. He was a big deal. Right. And um, we got him to do the voiceover. It was this big deal. Well, so we have the Riot Act, right? Right. It shows one time, and guess what happened the next day? The Rodney King yep. verdict came down, and there were literally L.A. was on fire. Right. There were riots every place. Right. Never saw that commercial again. Really? You couldn't. Right. It was too real. It was too real. Right. But it was spooky how real it was. Right. Yeah. And your you well, tell 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 me about the tell me about the riots. Now, you, I know you you had you had some some of your property damaged. Yeah. So that's another God, I sound like an old lady who finally is like living with her cats and I finally get to talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, here that's I go. Why I'm that's here. that's you. why I'm here. Yeah. No, right. so Back before that, mm-hmm. I had worked because you jump around a lot in advertising. It's kind of like you're you do a good job and then people hire you away. There's like no loyalty in advertising, right? <laughs> so they hire you away. So I was hired away after Apple to go. Well, I worked a lot of places, but I worked on Microsoft. Okay. And when I was at Microsoft, that was back in the day where it was just starting. Like software was a thing where you could choose what software people had to understand oh, now I need to choose like a word processing program. Nobody understood it. So I went over to Microsoft. I went to the agency in LA that worked on Microsoft. And once again, I was going up to Microsoft every two weeks up to what the campus, which nobody knew what a campus was. It was so cool. But it turned out to be spooky. Like my partner and I were like, there's something weird because like they have a track and they have a gym and they have showers and they bring in all this cool food and right. you can play volleyball and they have yoga. Oh, interesting. But I think nobody this leaves. A, I think of uh, and nobody. Yeah, because they want you to stay there and just work. Yeah. 24 seven. I Interesting. I think of that. All these perks that you just mentioned is more as a kind of a new thing that started with with uh, with Google. Camp. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Microsoft was, okay, Campus. Got it. First. So this is this has been this was going on. So then this was was this late late mid to late nineties. Oh, was, this was nineties. It was in okay. the nineties. Oh, right. Because the Rodney King riots were in. Yeah. Right, yeah. In the yeah. 90s. Okay. So uh, no, Microsoft was the one who started with the campus. Right. On. It was, and they, you know, they had the land up there, and it was beautiful. Right. And we were just stunned, but we, after a while, it's like. But nobody leaves, right. <laughs> you know, it's and I kind totally. of have that issue now with all this creative workspace right. because I've seen my kids work, too. And, you know, I understand there's ping pong tables. I understand there's a bar on the roof. I right. understand you can bring your dog. Right. But, but there's a life outside these walls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's um, yeah, they sort of have you. And if you amortize what you're actually being paid for the number of hours you work. Right. You know, people say they don't want to work for minimum wage. Well, you better look at what you're really making now, <laughs> yes. right? Right. With those free uh, Nature Valley bars, though, they're <laughs> so good. It's, it's, exactly. It, it's all worth it. But anyway, um, right. what were we talking about, Richard? You you went to, you were at Microsoft, and you 
Oh, so when I'm yes. at Microsoft, and this is where you know I have no business business sense. Right. I'm working on Microsoft, and they come to. And we have an account exec. He's like the bridge between the agency and the client, that like it. Microsoft. And he comes to the creatives, and he's the one who has the guts to say they don't like your ad. They want you to add like you know an, another kid or a mom or a dog or like tell them what the go to right. hell. I can't tell them that. So you have you know they're like the intermediary. Well, so this is interesting because I want to I want to thread a needle here. So yeah, you. You mentioned that uh, Microsoft had an account executive that they would they would no, inter- a- the agencies ag- do oh the the agencies do okay and they would interface with with the Microsoft team yeah. and then come back to you guys yeah exactly but then sometimes you would be I mean it's a I'm, hell of a job is it different than is that how Apple worked with you because you were in uh-huh. a, you were in a room with Steve Jobs though directly so was he giving well you I wasn't in I was in a conference room a conference when we room. were presenting work got it okay. so the day to day agencies have the business end of things the account people right. and they're the ones who understand what the budgets are what you know they need to do so the agency makes money but also to please the client they're the intermediary for the client and they come to the creatives and say all right they want to do tv all right they want to do something that you know targets this market or they want to do something here Got and it. so we create the work and then we go with the the account person and present the work and if there's any discussion or whatever the account person has to like bring us the bad news got or, it and got they, it. so the account people always like try and stay in good with the creatives because they always know i'm gonna have to rain on these guys like if i go and do a commercial and it's like yeah and i want to do it like i think we should shoot it out in a field or like right. you know, on an iceberg and right. this and that and the creatives you know the account person has to go to the agency and go okay we got this and they you know we need to up our budget because we're going to shoot on an iceberg and the, they have to come back to, and then the agents or the client would say forget it and then right. that Account exec has to come back to us and go, iceberg's dead, and then we'll iceberg's yell at the dead. account exec. Okay. Because we're not going to let yell at the client, so we yell at the account exec. Right. So they're that intermediary totally. person. So our Microsoft, as a client, was very nice and said, we are going to give you stock if you want it at our price. Right. So we will offer you, we're going to give you like 20, I can't remember, 2,500 shares or something of stock at our price. And I can't remember what that was going to cost. And and my account exec, I remember coming up, he goes, you're doing the stock thing, right, Robbie? And I said, I don't know. Should I do that? I really right. need a new car. Right. And he's like, get the stock. This is a really good company. I know this company is going to grow, I imagine, right. right? Right. And I'm like, I don't know. No, I bought the car with the leather interior. Of course. Of spent course. all my money on this stupid car. What kind of car was it? It was an Acura Integra. Okay. My mom actually had one of those. She did. Yeah. The white well, one with the li- wait, 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 did the lights pop up? Yes. Was it one of those? Yes. Yeah. See, I remember it picked me up in preschool and that thing. There I look like, like a boss. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's awesome. So I had that car. Okay. Got stolen during the riots. Yep. Yep. And It wasn't destroyed. It was stolen. Stolen. Stol- did you ever? During the riots, okay. which is like this whole thread of like, okay, I do the riot act. I'm now at another agency, right? Right. I have this car. You know what that stock was worth? I saw the ad ad later. What right. that stock I could have cashed out for? Wait, for today's so, Microsoft stock price? Yeah, or so the day. So I'm offered it at, in the early 90s, right? Got it, got it. I say, I'm not going to take advantage of this offer. Right. I'm going to buy myself a car. First right. new car I ever had. I was really excited. Got right. the leather package. Yeah, of course. Right? So I keep the car. Now I'm at another agency, right? Like later, the right. Riot, I'm doing the stuff for Universal. The riots happen. Right. My car gets stolen. I later see the guy who was my account exec on okay. Microsoft, okay. and he's like, what'd you ever do with that stock? And I said, oh, I didn't get it. I bought a car. Remember? And he goes, Robbie, he goes, I just cashed mine in, $250,000. There we go. 2,500 shares that I could have gotten for about seven or $8,000 somehow. Right. Two hundred and fifty. Right, and of course, if you if you held on to that, even to some of it. Oh I mean, yeah, to right. This day, right. It, right. It would have be been even even yeah. more than that. I, it's funny. I've I've had these. Some of my friends' parents uh, they'll share stories about. Oh, if I, you know, there's always these like, kind of these stock stories about. Oh, I, I had like uh, I had this stock at this time, but then I, I either sold it or I didn't yeah, take take the upper take the opportunity to actually yeah uh, get a uh, get a deal on it and uh yeah that's uh, uh it's so interesting hearing those things mm-hmm. um damn rodney king riots and hmm. it was where were you living at this time that it was that it it, w- it was stolen from where you were from your I house i was in santa or? monica it was out okay. in front of my house damn yeah i know and it went on for a while because right. ironically my car was filled with blankets and stuff that i had gathered i had gone through friends and all this stuff to give to the people who had been displaced because of the riots so it was oh, that week. So damn. I'm like, oh, that's an irony. They right. steal the car. It's like L.A. was just going crazy. Right. 
they steal the car in Santa Monica and it was filled with stuff I was going to take the next day oh, down to like a shelter because people were rioting in their own neighborhoods and like right. displacing their own, you know, people in their community. Right. Yeah. Um, tell me about, I want to hear about this, uh, the, the, the playgirl, playgirl. And <laughs> this was just an, in, this was an internship. Do you know what playgirl is? Well, so uh, does it, anybody it, know what that is? Well, it's affiliated with, it's affili- it's it's the it's the it's the counter to Playboy, right? Yeah, I don't think they were affiliated, but they oh, certainly they used the name. They, so they played off the name. It was it was nudie men. It was nudie men and was <laughs> and Hugh Hefner was not in no. involved. Okay, so it no. was a, Okay, mm. I'm okay, interesting. So what we no. nudie nudie men with of it's course uh, men. I know Playboy had actually some real at the time some actually really good uh good writers as well so in terms of some of the articles they would have among you know you flip through you see some bush on this page and then you see some really good uh, some really good writing yeah that's uh, how they justified everything yeah, exactly right? well did it's a brilliant marketing move did like did, have some substance <laughs> right right i mean seriously did so did playgirl did they kind of uh, do a similar thing where there'd be some 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 serious no, article it was total hack it was total okay <laughs> it was total hack because right. ironically i look at it now and it was run by a man owned by a man oh that's right and so okay that's who's rough. who's reading playgirl um right women and gay guys well none of the articles seem to like have any depth or honor who these people were reading it it was just it was you know what it was a disruptor it was something it was like isn't this kind of funny like people would give it to you know women at their bachelorette party like (laughs) but you know and it was supposed to be liberating and all of that but you know it's just a different thing everybody can just hit me over the head if they want but it's not the same you know, men are visual creatures. They love, of, you know, the naked body. They love, they need to see things. Women aren't. I mean, they are to a degree, but they don't need it that much. So it was like not that much of a <laughs> yeah. market for it. You say, like, it's funny because you write say. Write me uh, a good story that talks about like bodice ripping and we're all over it. Right. Oh, interesting. But so we don't bo- need bodice to ripping see. Ter- so 50 Shades of Grey, you're saying is more of the, you're saying bodice ripping in terms of yeah, so like how popular that was. Right. You didn't, okay. Yeah. Like you know, it's like more to the imagination. That's more tantalizing to women. I mean, we're on such a tangent here, but no, you no, know, this is, this it's, it's about. like, but it uh, is knowing your demographic, and right. you know, so it was kind of fun and kitschy, and you know, had nude guys. I just don't, you know. What did you do for them? Oh, so I mean, I was in college. I went. I was okay. I got to tell you, I started in fourth grade wanting to work. Like in fourth grade, right. I knew I wanted to be in advertising. I used to send away for stuff out of magazines where somebody had an ad, and I would write to the company and say, "Can I get a big copy or poster of that ad you made?" I mean, nobody was doing that. I was like, my room had ads in it. Yeah, so they would actually they would send you stuff back. Yeah, sometimes oh, they'd I send me that. stuff. They it, they were so nice. Right. And um and my dad uh ran a savings and loan i don't even know what they'd call now banks i guess but right. and they advertised every once in a while i remember saying like in the san jose mercury news and they had a one-page ad and i was like oh my god look at this in a newspaper and i would pin it up on my you know bedroom wall as a kid right. fourth grade so i was in college and i always wanted to work and i did several internships which weren't like now like people didn't really do them, but for some reason there was this, they were on index cards, like posted with tax with index cards in the career center and some playgirl magazine. I didn't know what it meant. And so I was like, okay, yeah, it was over the phone. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it this summer. Okay. I had no idea. And you show up and there's just naked dudes all over the wall. No, I no idea what it was. And I finally said, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I can do this. And he goes, I will, you will not quote unquote be exposed to anything right he said this is the running of a magazine and right. so i learned all about magazines advertising how they got advertisers and stuff so i wasn't i was never like at photo shoots or right. anything like that so what kind of adver- what kind of products would be advertised in the magazine because i assume uh, some products would not be you know some brands would not be wa- want to be associated with yeah you know, naked men or sexual things like that good so for you a, right richard good there we thinking. go See, I, I can do it uh, was there a uh so what kind of products were, were advertised? I don't really remember exactly. Okay. I okay. remember in the back, there were a lot of um, just like little, like you see in the back of magazines now, like, I don't even know, like stained glass picture frames and oh, I mean, you okay. know, like random stuff. Like, I guess it was cheap, you know, probably. Right. So right. I don't even remember if they had any national advertisers. It didn't last and that what long. Your, what do your folks think of, did, did they even know that you were working for Playgirl? Do they care? What was the... You know, that was back in the day when parenting was hands off. 
You know, Damn, people, okay. our parents didn't know what we were doing. Right. They didn't know what we were doing when we were kids. Right. They didn't, you know, we're not riding bikes with helmets. Right. You know, we're riding bikes at night against traffic with right. no helmet. They don't right. care. Right. And um, so, no, as long as I was going somewhere and getting paid. Right. And this was while you were at, uh, so you I was at UCLA. And so I was in, it was during it. the summer. So I lived at home. Got it. Okay. No. They but don't. then, so the internship was during the summer. Yeah. So then you would, okay, so you would drive somewhere. They didn't even know where that, or drive no. or walk or. No, I you drove. I'd you go drove. Santa Monica. It was in Santa Monica. Okay. And no. then, oh, I'm just going. I'll, I'll be back. They I'll didn't back. care. I mean, right. Richard, they, I did semester abroad. Like you think now all these kids are going abroad. Right. And they, you know, they're on faith. Their parents are on Facebook with them or they're texting them or they're doing well, whatever. I just saw the candidate. You did yeah. internship, you did internships, you did tech and you did study mm-hmm. abroad before, before it was cool. Robbie, well, there that's you your go. tagline. Thanks. Put that on your website. Thank you. Anyway, hold Thank on. Thank you. I cut you off though. So you were you were abroad. No, it's parents. a tangent. I'm just right. saying. I mean, I'm abroad. Right. Nobody called you over there. My parents didn't call me because right. it costs money. Right. And they, it's not like they didn't have the money, but you just don't. Right. And P.S. They have a life. I have a life. Like nobody right. was on top of. I had my appendix out, like I told you. Right. They didn't come over and like make sure I was okay and bring me home. Th- that, no. was a, that was at the end of your trip. So after that, was that when you left or did you still stay in? Oh, I, well, that was the end. Cause I stay, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm such a boring person, but I stayed, I did my, I did my semester abroad and then I wanted to go to Israel and work on a kibbutz. And that, that's when they, I said, I, what's I'm, a kibbutz? It's where like a commune. Okay. And they were doing a lot of them in Israel. And got that's it. the only time I got a letter. They'd like send this letter on this special thin paper that you buy. And they're like, you're not doing the kibbutz. And so right. I said, okay. So I found a farm in France and I went and worked like got a migrant it. worker. I picked strawberries and sheared sheep. There and go. so it was, the family was really nice. I lived on this farm and they took me hiking. And that's when I had the appendicitis. Damn. And, um, and so... Anyway, so I had this whole appendicitis. It was kind of toward the end of, I had, had to get back to UCLA. Right. They never, like, they never, I, we called them and said, I just had my appendix out. Right. They're like, okay, well, okay. when are you coming home? Right. And so I'm, you know, big stitches and stuff. I mean, that's when they, like, you know, your scar's like a foot long. Like right. stitches and stuff. I'm dragging all my stuff through Paris. I'm dragging it on the plane and Heathrow. I'm coming home. They don't care. Right. We turned We turned out fine. Right. No helicopter parenting. Right. Tell me about this uh, this uh, this grocery bid, this um, the billionaire these uh, oh billionaire yeah. boys club. Me hit me with the yeah. hit me with some knowledge on I'm that. I'm gonna be careful on that one because okay. people will find out who it is. But okay, yeah. Um, another account. Let's see. We'll talk about yeah. So that's an account a uh, partner and I had. Okay. Where w- okay, so we're working at an agency. Okay. Same agency that actually had Universal, and a friend's husband who was a big time investment banker okay. um, knew somebody in a, in a business and said, and I said, you know, I'd like to get that piece of business for my agency. Right. I'd like to do that. That's the next step up for me. I'm not just going to be a writer. I'm going to bring in business right. and I want to get a piece of that business. Right. And so this is kind of unheard of too, and especially a woman and this and that. And right. at this agency, it had already started where my partner and I, who was also female, they called us the girls the girls well you know f you right oh it's actually funny because i had a friend that uh i had a friend he actually listens to this he listens to this podcast he's a good dude he's one of the few he always gives me a he gives me feedback on it so i'm sure he'll hear this i had a friend that actually in the workplace uh was was in, uh, in an email um thread with two with two other women and he said hey girls here's the deal this is what and he wasn't trying to be uh he wasn't trying yeah. to be condescending. and then they completely just lifted him and that he oh. he got he got a little uh he got a little talking to from them to you can't just you can't call it girls and stuff, which 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 I get. But that's uh, interesting that. Uh, and you know. wouldn't know like he doesn't know that that's so sensitive. But right. imagine totally. in a workplace because our workplace, we were the only women creatives. Right. And then we have all male. We happen to at that agency, all male account execs okay. and the other creatives are male. So they're calling us the girls. And so how many people were at this place and you were the only. It's hu- it was a huge national agency and our agency was probably, you know, 100 150 people and how and, many women um just the two of us just the two yeah wow and sometimes you'd have more women because they would work on something like mattel okay. or you know like toys or something like you know like girl barbie or something Got like it. that Got it. but this agency at that point they didn't so 
you know, and we had worked on computers, software, cars. Right. I'd worked on, you know, non-gender specific things. I mean, things that maybe would have been thought of as male, but, you right. know, we could get into the mindset and understand the who the person was we were advertising to. Right. So, um, so we're, we're, and they called us the girls and it was really, it just drove us nuts. And at one point I said, you know what? We should, my partner's name was Lisa. I said, we should break off and start an agency called The Girls. And just like in your face, right? Yes. You're going to call us The Girls. We'll show you The Girls. Yes. And do advertising just for women. I mean, I still think that w- could have existed. Right. Like, come to us if you're a client and we can really talk to the women. We know how to do it. You know, that's, women were the real big consumers then. Right. But anyway, so uh, I go, d- I through my friend, I meet this guy who has this big major business yep. and they already are searching for a new agency and I and I go into him and I say I would like to oh no no so Lisa my partner I said how are we going to get into this guy we you know how are we going to get a meeting even though right. just through this guy so we start doing these teasers and they were bad I mean they were bad they were bad on purpose but funny and right. so we kept sending stuff to his office and finally he's like who are these people who are inundating me so when and you say teasers you mean uh, like we'd send something over um uh, like text? Was this co- copy? No, like a thing. Like, let's say I'm going to make this up right. because I'm not going to indicate what business this was. But totally. let's say it was a grocery because that was another account I had. Let's say it was a right. grocery account. So we'd get a head of lettuce. Okay. And we'd stick a thing on it, like design a thing that says, you know, let us get into your head. Right. Right. Kind of thing. We've got right. a head for your business, whatever we put on it. And right. then the next thing, like if it was groceries business, you know, we would have sent maybe a, you know, pound of ground beef or something and right. it said something like you know what's the beef why won't you talk to us right. i'm making this up but really right. bad puns i mean there's an expression in advertising use a pun go to jail really don't pun don't right. do puns right so wordplay okay. but not right. puns it's got it i like that it's kind of tacky but right. sometimes you do it and it's so you do it on purpose like we were doing this on purpose to get noticed they were so bad so this guy calls us he's like what what who are you why are you inundating me right. so i go in and talk to this guy about the business and he says all right I'll let you pitch my business so I go back to the agency and I say okay you don't know I've been doing you know partner Lisa and I've been doing this but we're bringing in this big guy and you can pitch his business you weren't even on the list to pitch because you get invited to pitch for new business right because you want this account and you aren't even on the list and because it was coming from us the men at the agency right weren't quite sure and it took them like two days of closed door meetings and discussions and so finally they're like all right well like you know all right we're gonna pitch this business and I'm like yeah you're welcome right Right. I'm getting you in this thing right so all this stuff is going on and I go meet with the client you know to say okay we're gonna pitch your business brief me more or whatever Richard he does the whole chasing around the desk thing Chasing you know, around the desk. Thing. That's the old term for like making a move. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So I got this prospective client, right? right? right. And I'm bringing him to the agency and he's like making the big time moves. I'm right. alone in his office. Right. And this is how this stuff goes. Right. So do you. And Lisa s- wasn't with you? No. Okay. So he didn't want both two people. Right. Now I know why. <laughs> right. 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 He wanted one. And I was the one who had the original contact through this executive. Right. Right. So I'm in this office. And so you're caught in this situation like, fuck. Right. You know, do I say something and blow the whole deal? Do I shrug it off? Do I pretend it's not happening? I mean, this is what goes on in women's heads. Right. And not only that, you have kind of a safety issue. Like, he's a man. He's big. He's, I mean, you know, like that's always kind of lurking in the back of your mind, even though he couldn't have done anything really bad, Right. but it was bad enough. Believe me. I mean, his hand was up my leg. Right. So anyway, that's like one thing I've got going on there. And I leave there kind of (laughs) laughing it off. Right. And you know, I'm like in my twenties, you know, what do you do? Right. And so I go back to the agency. We end up pitching the business. So I've got this lug head, you know, right. making moves on me. I go back to the agency with the guys who are calling us the girls and we're presenting to this guy and they want to do like a slideshow kind of thing. Like there used to be overheads. Do you guys remember that in school? Did you ever have overhead yes. projectors? Yes. You know what an overhead projector is? Yes. They wanted to do a presentation using an overhead projector. Uh-huh. And I'm like, wait, 
I worked on Apple. We've worked on Con- Mike. Like, get with it, man. Do right. PowerPoint at least. Right. And we're teaching them, and they're like, "No, we think we're more comfortable with this." I'm dealing with these lugheads. There, we right. finally get this presentation, you know, in front of this guy. Long story. Right. We get the business. So he calls, and oh, so here's the other thing. We get th- we have all this stuff. Blah blah blah. We rehearse. We have a rehearsal before we go present to him. And it's supposed to be 8.30 in the morning, right? So we all meet 8.30 in the morning at our agency offices. We're going to go everything, fine-tooth everything. And how are you feeling about this, given your experience in his office? Are you okay? Are you yes, we got the deal. It was worth it. Or are you like, damn. Well, we don't know we have the deal. We know we can can pitch. Yes, so we have the deal. Yes, you're invited to pitch. We made the list. Okay. Now we're putting together a presentation. See, Richard, that's what you do. You just put it aside. Women just walk away and put it aside because... I would have blown the whole business. So I'm curious. Obviously, we don't. You know, I, I I'm not. I'm not trying to get you to say anyone's name, but I, I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Like even, even now, for example, saying saying something about about who this was mm-hmm. would, what's it would be huge. So it would be huge. But and I'm curious. What's your reason for not for not saying you just don't want it? You just don't want to deal with it. Um, or I, yeah, I don't want to deal with it for several reasons. He was right. married married at the time. Right. I can't tell you how big this guy is. Right. He's big. Right. And I don't want to deal with the shit right now. Right. I just don't. And totally. I don't feel like he's dangerous because if you don't know about this guy by now, come on. I mean, he's <laughs> right. like, right? Right. And I just don't want to deal with it. Right. I don't feel like he's out there. Um, well, at this point, he's probably, I mean... He's over the hill. Yeah, exactly. But so, so I, was Harvey Weinstein. Right, I mean, you right. know, right? Like, gross. Right, right. That's w- that's that's what all the women are saying. I don't know if men do that. Like, we're looking at all these guys like Charlie Rose, Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Like, right. Wha- ugh. Right. Gross. Right. Yeah. Right. But um, no, I don't want to be the one. Right. I I I I, I can't no. deal with it. Right. I, I I get that. I get that. Um. Uh, and right. and it was bad. This is how bad it is for women. Uh-huh. It was bad, but it wasn't anything like getting naked or, you know. Right. Totally. You know, doing something in front of some. I mean, it wasn't right. bad at all. I mean, right. he stopped when I clearly stood up right. and said, oh, whoa, 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 change the subject. I better go. Whoa, right. Whoa, whoa, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. He yeah. stopped. Okay. Well, I, I, I appreciate I appreciate you sharing about that. I'm just. Uh, uh, it's yeah, sad, I, though, right? Totally. Yeah. Like, I still don't even want to. I can't deal with the. So. Right. Long story short, we go to the, the um, we have this rehearsal, meetings at 8.30 in the morning. My partner, Lisa, and I, we show up for the meeting. Those jerks did the meeting at 7.30. So this is, so these are the lugheads at the agency. The lugheads, right. They tried to keep us out of it so much that they did the whole rehearsal, the whole go through and everything, right. all the everything without us. And we got there at 8.30 and said, What's going on? They were already in the conference room cleaning up. And I said, what are you going right. on? Oh, no, no. The meeting was at 730. You tell me any ad agency that meets at 730 in the morning. I mean, right. we're kind of notoriously late. Like and this we work like, keep, keep us out of keep it. Keep the girls out. Keep the girls. Damn. So we ended up pitching the business, got the business. Because of because of the girls. The girls, We because we right. did the work. Right. Got the business. Right. And those idiot lugheads at the agency got the call. And I'm like. I didn't know. The president of the agency gets the call. Oh, you got the business. Right. The client, the guy who made the moves, calls me finally, and he's like, what the hell is going on over there? I haven't gotten a response. We called over, said you got the business. Nobody's called us back to accept it. Right. I'm giving you an hour to tell me because I'm going on to the next person. Right. So I run into the president's office, and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, we have to decide whether we're going to take this. I was going to get a percentage of it. I'm like, are you kidding? They didn't want to pay. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to take the. B- they were so opposed to two women bringing in this piece of business. Jeez. They turned it down. Well, so why did there they is no reason for them to turn that business down? Right, and why? Well, why did they even do the pitch though? Uh, they, because were- corporate heard about it. Okay. And so, so they had to go through the motions. Thing, they had to go through the motions, and their whole thing yeah. at the end. I mean, the whole thing just like boggles your mind how deep. This type of chauvinism goes. Right. Now, remember, this is early 90s, but it was so deep. Right. And so I said, you've got to call him back. And he goes, well, I'm t- we're trying to figure out if we should take the business. Now we're thinking, if we got this, maybe we could go for the same category. Because you can't have two. I can't, um, I can't have, like, Macy's 
and Nordstrom. I got to have one department store, like one client. I can't have Apple and right. you know whomever. Competitive. You can't do that. You I can't. mean, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You know, why would I trust you advertising my stuff and you're advertising my cl- my competitor? Totally. Right. Totally. So right. anyway, so they're like, no. Oh, if we got this, now we're thinking maybe we should pitch a similar business that would be bigger. I'm like, you got this bird in the hand and right. you're not going to do it. Right. So finally, the client just like, I haven't heard from you guys. You're going to turn me down. Are you thinking of turning me down? I'm not giving it to you. So th- he took it away. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Well, I, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing. That was, that was, that was a loaded, that was, there was a, <laughs> there was a lot there. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, uh, tell about this, um, this single, the single hair, the single <laughs> hair thing. That sound, that sounds intriguing. That's great. That's at uh, another agency yet okay. again. Wait, how many? How many? Okay, th- another agency. How many? Do you even know how many agencies you've worked for? Uh, under in, ten, in, but under I don't 10. know exactly. Okay. Okay. Right on. That was before I, you know, became a mom. Right. But um. Yeah, I don't know. Seven, eight. Okay. Right on. Uh. Yeah. So I went to another agency. Great agency. Love those people. I loved everybody, but that last one. Oh, okay. A bunch of creeps. Right. But um, right. uh, or not creeps, just sad guys. Sad, sad men. Okay. Sad white men. Uh, right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this next agency loved everybody, but worked for mm-hmm. a very conservative client. Okay. Um, big food product company. Won't name them, but, you know, huge sure. international company. And we were doing a commercial with that was illustrated. So, um, you know, instead of having like live action in the commercial, it was all illustrated. So it was like a cartoon kind of thing. Right. But this illustration was really cool. This guy Bjorkman was kind of famous um, for doing. He does a lot of stuff for the New Yorker. So we got this. Oh, guy I love that their illustrations. Are yeah, I like lo- that kind of pencil drawing, a uh, pen it. drawing type thing. Very right. simplistic. Right. So our commercial had this. It was all white background and kind of a you know black line, you know, kind of line drawing, and it yep. was kind of like almost moved um, you know as it moved it almost kind of was like kinetic and so it was this character and he was this very simple man line drawing and he had three little hairs on his head like whoop, 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 you right. know like little lines coming out of his head right? right it was a style and they spent three hundred thousand dollars in focus groups trying to decide whether that man should have three two or one hairs on his head. Jeez. Yeah. We went through so many test versions. Oh like, God. I think we did 42 versions of the commercial. Right. And so they spent $300,000 because you're paying the illustrator each time. Right. You're paying the editor every time. Right. And you're paying for focus groups every time. How, how, was this a... Was this fairly common in the advertising that y- that you would work in? You would you guys would focus, focus group test this stuff? Yeah, sometimes we'd... Oh, that was fun. That's literally like... How do people not know? They're in a room at a table with a big mirror on one <laughs> wall. Right. And we're sitting in the room behind the mirror, like right. like you see in cops, you know, like in police stations. Right. And we all sit there and we listen to people. A moderator would like show a commercial or show a print ad and we would listen to their input right. and and then take all their input and then go make the changes on the commercial or the print ad, according to what these p- focus groups would said. Would you ever? Would you ever hear some of the things they say? Like, uh, you, let's say you 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 worked hard on a tagline, you worked hard on something, and then yeah. you just get these random people yeah. uh, that come and say, "I don't like that." Like, does would that uh, did yeah. that ever rub you the wrong way, or is whatever they say right because they are the they're the target? So you need to take what they say as this, as as gold. I think that it goes fifty fifty. Okay, because respect that that's you know you got to get out it's like those of us who live in LA like not everybody thinks like LA you know I go back to one of my kids is in Ohio and it's like not everybody is as liberal as LA or is you know mixed as LA or whatever like you have to remember not everybody thinks like us so we are advertising you know nationwide we need to hear from other people and other perspectives and other economic groups and whatever right. and so they were very valuable but sometimes right yeah you know, sometimes we'd be like well that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard you know right. if somebody didn't like something or found something because people are also you know one person's opinion isn't everybody's opinion so you got to take it with a little grain of salt but right. the your more conservative companies like big procter and gamble kind of companies that yep. you know 
they wanted to rely on research because they're very data driven. And that's not always what you want to do because advertising is entertainment right. and, and it's connecting with the consumer, kind of knowing what the consumer needs before the consumer knows they need it. Right. Or, you know, well, it's like, like Henry Ford, if you ask, if you ask what, if it, what the customer wanted, they said they would want a faster horse, right? Brilliant, Richard. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I'm just. Uh, I love yeah, that. Right. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's kind of the. So on, on, on some level, you kind of got to. Yeah, you got to you got to take a risk and you yeah. can't just. Um, yeah, you can't just you can't just recycle what people are already comfortable yeah. with. Uh, right. on. Well, yeah. and uh, Jim Carrey has this um, uh, uh, documentary out right now. OK. He was he's plays Andy Kaufman in a movie and had these people follow him around with. Uh, documentary cameras and he's been holding on to the film for like 20 years so it's on Netflix now I think and he was um, talking about doing stand-up at the beginning and right. when he was doing stand-up he was like at night he'd go home and he's like how can I connect how can I and for like two weeks like how can I connect with them how can I connect with the audience how can I connect and all of a sudden he woke up one day and he was like they want to know I care they want to know I care and right. so he twisted that like he had this insight like he want that no they want to know I care and they want to forget for a while right. and so he had that insight so he, uh, his next stand up his f opening line was well hello how are you and that's just fine so here's what I say it was like he turned it on its head right. they could escape because he didn't care I right. mean it's like this whole convoluted thinking and when you watch him you know hear him talk about it it makes more sense but it's kind of like that with advertising like you don't know yet how I can make you sort, like, kind of connect with you. And maybe connecting with you isn't the most obvious way. Right. So in advertising, that's why you kind of, like, some of us are made for advertising. We have this sort of gut way of connecting with people. And it's people who write, too, like, gut way of saying, I, I'm going to put this out there because I think this is what you think, but it hasn't been articulated yet. Right. I think you just, you touch on something that... I, uh, you know, with, with car or with car advertisements or I mean, a lot of different types of advertisements. I mean, it's selling the experience, right? So you'll see a car commercial and you're like, w w what, what did they, they didn't even talk about the car. They showed this, they showed this Acura driving through this beautiful road in the middle of all these hills. And it's all about adventure and exploration. And, and, you know, I, I see, uh, you know, ads like that and um, mm -hmm. even ads that are just kind of almost so overt they're in your face like oh buy this product and you will have you'll you'll have this experience uh, I think uh, like I was in beer advertising exactly or and I, and I was in New York City one time I saw this I think it was a Mercedes ad and it was it said something like this isn't what it said but it said something it was, I felt very almost almost disrespected uh, by it on some level it was something like Lo elevate your like luxury essentially luxury equals happiness or so something yeah. like that that's basically what I read it as and on some level that kind of makes me feel uh, you know uh, makes me feel kind of like oh I'm just a mindless consumer that oh you think that if I buy this I'll be happy like come on tr try again try again bud but on another level it's almost like uh, it it's almost like they're 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 welcoming they're welcoming everyone they're like listen come Buy, buy this car. We want you to buy it. We do, we don't we don't care who you are. We don't care where you come from. We don't care anything about that. Uh, we want your money. Obviously, that's a big part of advertising. Mm -hmm. And in, on some weird kind of level, I'm curious what you think of this. On some weird kind of level, it's almost like that is kind of a uh, a unifier in a way because it's not it's not targeting a specific necessarily uh, a necessarily race or gender. It's listen, buy our product. J join us and all you have to do to join us give give us some money and you're part of the you're part of the club i'm curious does that does that yeah. resonate with you or well I? It and i hate it i right. hate okay. it right i right. think that is the laziest advertising first of all right. that's 1950s the right. 1950s were the woman in the you know pearls and the beautiful dress and the apron yeah. and this who was just totally depressed yeah well, yeah um, it, right? right they're not even you know they're not even addressing that like right. her real situation but you know our soap will make everything clean and your husband will be so happy your life will right. be perfect right right well that was stupid well I but still it see worked some of at that first though. it worked right. at first okay then you know the big the big Renaissance the big thing that disruptor as you mm -hmm. will um, that changed everything was back the V 
VW, the Volkswagen Beetle, yes. which is you guys know is the bug now. Right. Um, the bug. And everybody had big cars and whatever. And they had this weird little looking car. And these guys at Doyle, Dane and Birnbach in New York were like, how are we going to advertise this? Right. And everybody had big cars. You know what they did? In Apple took a page from this. Right. They had a very simple picture of this beetle, this bug, right? We called them beetles. I don't, you guys call them bugs now. Right. Of this VW bug. And it just was very small on the print. It was a print ad. Very small on the page. Shadow. Just like ever, Apple used to do. Right. Shadow, right? And it just had two words. Think small. Yeah, I just got sh- I just Nobody got shivers when you said that. Nobody was doing that. Right. It was all like the big car, the big right. Chevy, whatever. Think small. Think small. And you know what? They read. That's what I talk about. This intuition. They read in what was going on socially because that was right at the movement of the '60s. Right. right? We're coming out of that '50s housewife, one big car for the family. Right. And it was think small. Like you know what? Maybe more people can have cars, and maybe I don't want to take up so much space, and maybe right. I want to be like radical. Right. Right. And this had the engine in the front or the back and, you know, the trunk was in the front. Right. I mean, it was but think small. So I look at this stuff like like that kind of answered something for people. Right. It didn't say you're beautiful. It didn't say you're going to have a happier life. It's just like we're radical and there are radical things happening before it was happening. It was brilliant. Right. And they continued that. I I, I mean, it's so it's so transparent to me. I mean, how. We know we're not happy. Your happiness is not through material things. Right. But there are luxury items, and people love the luxury. But, sure. you know, there are still ways to advertise things that, I mean, Geico, my favorite. Like, the, and you know what? That's Geico, actually a great question. So, Geico, is that, Geico, is that your favorite in the game right now? Because they have They're three different campaigns. And how brilliant. Who else right. does this? They know they can't just approach people one way. And right. this is why I kind of bring up the whole Snap or Instagram kind of thing. Like, right. you can advertise a lot of different ways. Nobody else is doing this. But Geico has the, um, like, right now, they, you know, they have the thing that's so surprising. Like, they have Randy Jackson, you know, who's always saying, like, dog, hey, dog, you know, right. the guy from Amer- American Idol, yep. like, judging a dog show. And it's funny oh, nice. because he's like, well, dog, I don't know, dog. And, you know, it's kind of funny, the reaction of the people in the dog show. Sure. And they're like, Randy Jackson judging a dog show? Not so surprising. Right. But Geico, you'd be surprised. I mean, they have this right. whole campaign going, right? This, right. not so surprising. You could go forever. We say it had legs. Like, that campaign has legs. But they also advertise... So it has legs, meaning it's not a one and done. Not it's a one a, and we done. can keep riff- riffing. That's what okay. you want. You're Got always it. looking for something that has legs. And Got that's it. how I sell. Like, when I'm going in to pitch something, I'm like, this has legs. And I'm going to show you how this has legs. Because we right. can do this and this and this. Geico right. also has the the lizard thing, the gecko. Right? The Geico Gecko. Right, right. And so that's a whole nother way they're advertising. Same same product. Right. But they're doing it a different way. And then they have another way. I can't even think off the top of my head. Well, but they got the caveman too thing going yeah, on. Yeah, they had the caveman thing. Right. Three different ways they're advertising the same product. Right. And right? I, does So in, in my mind, when uh, in some of the work I've done with, 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 with big companies in, in software, work, work with them, they... They're very focused on making sure their brand is tight. Like you can't do this with our logo. You yeah. can't do this. And you know, I, it's interesting to me that Geico, for example, they don't just have okay. The geckos are spokesman. That's our mascot, and that's all we have. So, how does a company decide if they can, you know, let's stay on mess, stay mm-hmm. on point, stay be very clear with what our you know, our vehicle to the consumer is versus this Geico method where it's just kind of blitzing them from all sides. Yeah, but their brand is still the same. Right, So okay. they still use humor. Okay. They still, right? I mean, even the gecko's so humorous and whatever. Right, Their right. logo never changes. Right. But, you know, there are a lot of different ways you can say the same thing. I mean, that's right. why everybody's a writer, right? I mean, everybody can be a writer. My my voice is different than your voice and different than your voice. And we can approach things emotionally. We can approach things, you know, with humor or whatever. And their right. brand is kind of like, you know, like I'm using my elbow now, now kind of like, hey, God, hey, buddy, hey, hey, hey. you right. know, like, hey, you get, I get you, you get me kind of like that little elbow in the ribs. Right. That's sort of their tone. Right. And so everything they do is going to have that tone, but you can still do it a million different ways. Got it. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I dig mm-hmm. that. Okay. This is, this is, this has been awesome. I want to, I want to ask you about one more, um, one more thing. This, uh, 
this um, uh, se- you know several teams being pitched the exact same thing and then having to be uh, yeah. having to compete. Tell me about that. Yeah, so that I worked at Shiat Day. <laughs> Worked at a lot of places. Right. I was freelancing at Shiat Day for okay. a summer, so it was like a three three months. I wasn't an employee there. I freelanced there, and it was such so Shiat Day, um, which by the way, one of the greater campaigns Shiat Day did. Do you guys know Shiat? Do you know Shiat Day? I, I, it it sounds from it sounds very familiar. What? Wh- yeah. Wh- so they took over the Apple account, okay. um, and then they they've done a ton. I mean, they always had the best creative, the best. It was. Um, uh, so they're an, they're an ad agency. Ad agency, okay, and they were really cool. They were in Venice, California. Okay, and they had um, who was it? I think it was Frank Geary. Did their building, and it had these huge binoculars in the front that you'd walk through. Anyway, everything oh, they did was right out there. Okay, beautiful workspace, amazing creative, right. great creative. Like I, re- I'll never forget. They were they were advertising. Um, they did a campaign for ABC. Okay. You know, television, right? Right. And they turned something on its head because people were like, oh, TV. They, people called p- TV the boob tube. And TV is right. bad for your brain. And you shouldn't watch te- too much TV. This is like back in the 80s or right. no, 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 90s or something. Okay. And they turned it on its head. And they did this whole campaign about TV being good for you. And like one of the print ads I'll never forget was, if TV is so bad for you, why is there one in every hospital room? Oh damn! Right, <laughs> right, brilliant, right. Like that's what I strive for. Well, you know like, that kind of that's smart, <laughs> right? Well, so I'm curious, what? So obviously, you know, uh, that that's that's um, you know that's not a very that, that, that's a kind of a benign example. I'm about to compare it to something that's not benign. But what what would you say to you know uh, some people that view view advertising? At, you know, think of a big tobacco in mm-hmm. terms of how they were steering the conversation and showing you kind of. These 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 messed up messages about cigarettes not being bad for you or making you cool or mm-hmm. any of these other any of these other things. So what would you? Uh, I guess main question is when when you do you uh, try to avoid work th- work like that or does that not really happen so much anymore today? Is that even? No, it. Uh, Richard, you're so good at this. <laughs> yeah, nice. nice. Well, I'm just trying to. I, I, <laughs> You've got good questions. There we go. Yeah, because yeah. you know that's that's an. Um, when I went to the agency that had the Universal account, okay, um, they had accounts with RJR, um, tobacco, okay, uh, company, and I said when I took the job, I said, by the way, I won't work on anything that's yes. RJR, right, and um, it was a bit of an issue, right, because that's back, you know, when people could still do a lot of advertising for it, right, and um. So I never had to work on anything like that. And, right. you know, quite frankly, alcohol is kind of the same thing. Oh, totally. And, um, you know, there's no warnings on with everything that goes on with alcohol. Right. But, um, yeah, I think there are things that you could say you don't want to work for or companies right. that, um, you know, you don't believe in their politics or whatever. I think now I wouldn't work for certain people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right on, taking taking a, take a stand. So I, I taking a stand. That, so that anyway, so day. no, but that's a good. So right. shy day. Anyway, so shy day is brilliant, and they're also the ones who you guys might remember. There was an Apple campaign um, called Think Different. Think Different. Yep. So totally. Very close to Think Small. Right. Right. Little too close for comfort for me, Damn. but it was still brilliant. Right. And all of us in advertising know the Think Small stuff because it's like textbook. Like right. that's when advertising became art, really. Right. And um. But they did the Think Different, which was still brilliant, right? Right. Because it was like, go with Apple, think different. Like, don't be like mainstream IBM type, you know, PC, be with us. Big brother, everyone's the same. Yeah, and so that was a really good campaign. But anyway, I worked for Shite, and it was very interesting because I never had this anyplace else where they gave the same assignment to like six or seven teams. And they didn't have... Oh, within Shiat Day. Within Shiat Day. Got it, got it. So, and they didn't have offices. This is sort of the beginning of that creative workspace. Yep. So... I always had my own office, and I'd go there, and we're all in cubicles. And this was in the this was in the nineties, like probably late nineties. Late nineties, yeah, nine, okay. Well, no, 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 early nineties. Early nineties, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking babies. So before my babies were born. That's your. And that's your. Uh, how that's you determine your yeah, right before and after children. Totally. Um, and uh, so no, we were all in cubicles, and so you could hear over. You know, a cubicles like right. shoulder height. Right. So let's say Richard, you and your friend have are a team, and yep. I've got a team, and there's a team here and team there, and we can hear each other. And the creative director says, um, okay, we're going to do a new ad for um, 
uh, let's say, uh, Honda, you know, they had the Honda account or something, I can't remember, you know, right. for this new uh, minivan. Right. And so, uh, in a day, I want to see what ideas you guys have. Well, everybody, there are 14 people. In a day? People. Well, let's do, I want to see where you are. Got it. Okay. Right? Yeah, Just yeah. like concept kind right. of thing. And so, um, we all... We couldn't even talk in a regular voice. Right. Because if somebody heard your idea, right, right it'd be like, oh, they'll take it. Right. So it was like this really weird. Was that toxic, you think? Or was it just, it was a kind of I don't of know. I'm still kind of torn about okay, it. Okay, okay. Because it's kind of brilliant, but right. it's really toxic for the people in it. Right. But they got the best out of us because I'll be damned if I was not going to have them pick my idea right. or idea I shouldn't say mine but my partners and my right, idea right. and so it was really competitive and I think that's right. how they got the best work out of people but I wouldn't have stayed there for any length of time I didn't like that right that sounds like you can uh, yeah they I had I Nike too they were big Nike people right on uh so what's um what, what's keeping you what's keeping you busy now you're I know you're you still working on working on a script yes so I freelance for advertising okay um but you know, all these stories that were going on. I was working in advertising. It was great structure because really an a, a commercial is a 60-second mini film. I mean, right. believe it or not, when I did a commercial, I had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right. Even in 60 seconds. And then sometimes we had to tell it in 30 seconds. Right. So I totally got, like, how to zero in. So now I'm trying to convert it into, I kept a huge file, huge file, fold, you know, th full of folders of right. stories for... Uh, script ideas and now I'm I've written I'm written a lot of them and I'm out and pitching I, at my age Richard it never ends I'm looking for an agent because yes, right I'm writing writing I've written treatments and I've written full on scripts and everything for some of these things and I feel like I have an advantage because I know that I'm not just writing because I must be a storyteller which I respect <laughs> right but right. you know it's like I'm writing because I think they're viable ideas but also there's a market for them Right. So you um, got you got the creative side, but you also know the business side. You yeah. Think of the market as well. Yeah, I'm kind of honing in on that too. I love so that. hopefully, Richard, next one will be like about something we're producing, right? Yes, I love it. I love it. Well, Robbie, Bob, thank you, uh, thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun. Again, that's FinneganFreelance.com. F-I-N-N-I-G-A-N Freelance.com. Check it out. And if you wanna if you wanna work with her, uh, reach out. She's got contact information there. Robbie, uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Richard, thank you. Thank you.